Yeah, I agree. Your sister was the victim of an acid attack. Okay. And, you know, you really helped her through it and got her back on her feet. But speak a little bit about how that experience shaped you and your views of violence against you. What you saw your sister with. Well, my sister um, is is an acid attack survivor, and she's quite a hero of her own. Um, I really can't speak for her, uh, her, but I can. But for you to watch her going through what she had after. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just feel that we are just so all over the world, not just in India. You know, just living and. Success is so overrated, you know, because anyway, nothing lasts. So rejection is so hard to deal with for anyone. And people who, you know, like growing up in schools also, coming first was such a big deal. Even my own family, like how the kind of trauma I had to go through when I, the, the year I didn't stand first, you know, my parents like treated me like, oh my God, you've done some sort of, you know, crime. So that kind of attitude. So, so I think, especially men, there's no acceptance for the fact that this woman doesn't want you know she doesn't have feeling for me. Yeah. 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 I mean usually that is the intention. Or I think ninety percent violence against women. Did that kind of rejection triggers it that if I if I can't acquire you need to accept no as no. Yes. So you know, I've been through struggle for ten years and I think what shaped me up as a person today. I don't know how much success people see me as, like that is very external sort of uh, aspect of one's growth, but within me, I think I'm, I'm a very successful person, I'm a very personal level, because the way I dealt with my failures has been very, very heavy, and I would like to write a book about that, but how, I mean, success will never teach you anything, and failures, you know, when you lose something, how to deal with it and not lose your self-respect and your self-worth. If 10 years of rejection, humiliation, embarrassment. You're talking about yourself. My own self, you know. If that would have made me believe in what uh, the whole world thought of me as, you know, like they thought of me as a loser or whatever. I didn't think of myself as that. I didn't think of my, uh, myself as uh, what my parents thought of me or the world thought of me. And that's why I could do what I did in my life. So uh, I, I feel no matter what kind of crime is it, we need to tell our children it's okay to fail. There's nothing wrong in Failing. Nothing lasts forever. So that kind of spirit has to be there. You know? What was the toughest thing for you in these feelings? And what was the most cruel thing you heard said about yourself? Um, I think body shaming is one. That, body shaming? Yeah. I, a journalist told me he wrote that this girl from mountains who has frizzy hair and a lizard like body. <laughs> a journalist wrote that? In, yeah, in a review of gangster, it's like a body like a lizard or something. Uh, and I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that was. Uh, and people made cool. people made fun of your accent. They call you the Pahari Ladki. You taught yourself English. Why was that important? Um, it was important to me because I wanted to reach out to many people. I don't always see failure and criticism as something which is out to destroy me. Like, yeah, I definitely can't do anything about the lizard thing. But, uh, but whatever, I think all the criticism that I get, I have a very objective point of view to that. And, um, and I've been always like that. And that really helped me and shaped my personality. I wanted to reach out to many people, especially in Mumbai, but not many people speak to me. Yeah. And so, so how did you teach yourself? I have a tutor. Yeah. Um, yeah, who works on my accent and on my language when I get time. Um, so the idea is to reach out to as many people as I do. And uh, we travel a lot and sometimes I get to attend these very um, significant summits and all of that. So I want to reach out to many people. Um, like my parents made me feel like all the time I was like, and do things like that. So I had to sort of, you know, have this um, this thing, okay, fine, I, I must be a bad, but I want this, I want to do this. So I, I'm very comfortable with being a baddie. <laughs> Whereas I feel the need to let our girls be like as if overly ambitious. When people said, oh, you are so ambitious, and uh, I remember someone telling me that. 
I was okay with that. I don't feel anything wrong in being late, Shandi. That's your definition of a smart woman. Yeah. Um, and uh, I even don't mind calling myself a bitch. But I do have a different definition for that. What's bitch. yours? Uh, baby total control of herself. <laughs> so that's okay. People can call me names. But, but this is a new trend. It's very interesting. That's, that's what I write about in my book. That today, the urban feminist especially is embracing, you know, what is it? A slut used to be a bad word, now you have slut walks, there used to be shame around menstruation, now you have people actually pinning sanitary pads on campuses, you're saying I'll embrace the word bitch. This is interesting, but we still can't seem to answer a very simple question, are you a feminist? Without women going into yes, no, maybe, if, but, so let me ask you, are you a feminist? Oh, uh, well, um, yes. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that there is a simple answer to that question and there is only one answer. As, as, as we close, you have been very blunt. You said, I don't, you trashed awards, film awards. You said it's a sham. You said, I don't need to take selfies to be in the room. When you make these kind of remarks, do people in your industry just hate you? Do they still call you to their parties? Uh, well, there is a lot of uh, prejudice around me, I'd say. A lot of prejudice? Yeah. And, uh, and people just, the simpler you get, more complicated you seem, isn't it? I don't know why is that, but people, the way they approach me is like, they approach me like I'm a time bomb, which can explode any time. So it's like, can we talk? Like, yes, we can. You don't have to you know, give that warning sort of walk. So I don't know why it's that because I, in my understanding of me, I I am what I say and I am I am I am the most uh, you know honest person about my past, about my present, and the person I am. And still, I seem so threatening is is beyond me. Uh, but again, that doesn't uh, distort my understanding of myself. You've never doubted yourself. No, I'm not that dangerous. I could be a little dangerous. But you know, you come here knowing nobody go without food, money, you sleep on the pavements, you now told us you even experience physical abuse and you fell into a trap. When you experience, when you go through abuse changes, and this is you know, something I've spoken about, the changes all of us will experience you. How will that experience physical abuse change? But when this man, who must be my father's age, he hit me so hard that my head was, um, I fell on my head on the floor, I started to bleed. And I must have been like 17 or something. And I, I picked up my sandal and I hit his hard heart, and head hard and started to bleed as well. But then obviously his physical strength took over mine and um, and, I, and I tried to, and I struggled. And I struggled so much that I couldn't believe that I had so much strength that either I die or I kill you. And then I went to cops and I lodged an FIR against this man. But that day I really saw myself as who I always thought I was. But I never really tested myself under such extreme situations. But that, that sort of um, clarified my own understanding of myself. So I, I thought I'm actually a born fighter. And was the man ever punished? Uh, he wasn't punished. He was just given a warning that stop stalking this woman and if you will see you around her. And he has a criminal record. So, um, was he a powerful person in the industry or not? Well, to work for a struggler. I mean, who doesn't have a... So he's a member of the industry? Yes. And how did that experience change as a woman? You recognized the fight, you recognized yeah. the spunk. Yeah. But did it change you? Did it make you cynical? Did it make you... Angry? It made me total badass. It made me totally badass. Like I do not now even like anyone raising their voice on me. It made me so guarded of my own personal and intimate space that it's amazing how guarded I became, which I love. I absolutely love. And I, I, I think after going through that extreme experience at that young age, um, it just made me understand my own strengths and weaknesses. So as we end, your message to women who may be struggling, who may be fighting, your own journey and the message you take away from that interview, just the last one. Mm, just, just be yourself. You know, see, 
see yourself the way you are. I mean, there's no message as such. But be yourself. Yeah. And that's difficult yeah. enough for so many women. Yeah. Just be yourself. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think the whole journey is remarkable. Thank you, Ramina. That was terrific. And we have a little photograph. The depot, please come up. You come. Check out. Such a lovely. Milan, China.